So let me outline the, the fundamentals of Google Books. Google gets a lot of physical books. They go to a place with physical books. They, in, they, they use their very sophisticated intense scanner to quickly scan those books, turn the text of the book, turn the, to the pictures of the text of the book into words so that they have all the words of the book. And now they have of a complete library. So Google's gone out to various really huge libraries and has scanned all of these books. That's Google Books. Google Books destined, Google hopes, to have all the books ever created in their library so that it's the giant library of books, um, the giant electronic library of books. That's the basic idea of Google Books. So I think the best way to get you into the issues, I give you the idea of, of Google Books, but the best way to get you into the issues of Google Books is to actually do a little bit of a debate with myself to say the pros and cons. So I'll start with a con and then I'll counter it with the pro and I'll try to be as, as, um, as reasonable about the pros and the cons and not take a side because once again, I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking about it. I don't, I'm not sure whether Google Books is a good thing or a bad thing. So I'll let you decide, but I'll outline some of the issues. All right, so Google Books may be copyright infringement. It may be, you know, that Google is, um, is stealing from all of these authors. There's arguments that they are stealing from all of these authors. And that's the, that's the con argument. So, you know, why, why should Google be the one who owns all of these books? It's, they really should belong to the original authors or the, you know, the descendants of the authors or something like that. The pro, op, the pro argument is, well, you know what? Copyright is done, you know? And, and that's really, I, I do believe this, that copyright is way out of date. The idea of copyright, you know what that means? Copyright, the right to copy. You know how many copies there are of everything just floating around the web? <laughs> I mean, there's copies of stuff all over the place. The right to copy is like, it's not even the right concept, you know? So, so we are so out to lunch on the idea of copyright anyway, that who knows whether it's infringement or not. Okay, the pro argument is they're stealing from these people based on our ideas of copyright. The con, ar the, the con argument is they're stealing from people based on our ideas of copyright. The pro argument is what ideas of copyright? The whole, I the whole notion of copyright is out the window and we have to refigure it anyway. All right, Google track what you read. That's a, con, that's a con argument. Why give Google these books? They could track what you read. Um, and that's not a good thing. Google's going to know what you're reading. We don't want Google looking over our shoulder knowing that I read this book or that book. And the, uh, the, the, the pro argument there is, well, anybody you, that does this can do the same thing. That's not an argument for whether Google should have it or not. That's an argument for whether it should be done, whether we should allow um, we should allow books to be read online. If we can have books read online, then people can track what you're reading. That's just how it is. So it's not about Google, the, the pro argument says. It's, um, it's really about our regulations of what you're allowed to do when someone's reading something online. Are you allowed to track them or aren't you allowed to track them? If you don't like that, pass a law against it. But it doesn't have anything to do with Google Books. It has to do with the scanning of them. Okay, con argument. Oh, we don't want them tracking. We don't want Google knowing what we read. Pro argument is, well, get used to it. Everybody knows what you read. Okay. Uh, next argument, Google will use this to target ads, right? That's what Google's about. You know that. You know that from this class. Google's all about more information about you in order to target ads, and they will do that. There's no doubt about it. That's what they want to do. That's the value to them. And the pro argument is maybe a targeted ad is a good ad. Maybe I want them to target ads. Maybe I'm happy that they're targeting ads because I'm sick of getting all these ads that, I, that, that have nothing to do with me. And the more they know about me, the better the ad's going to be. And you remember we talked about this moment of, uh, what do we call it, the moment of opportunity or something like that. I forget what the actual term was. Where you want something. And if somebody's presenting it to you at that moment, that's a good thing. Okay, so those are the pros and the cons. Uh, Google will make more money on this than the authors make. Probably true. That's, I mean, I, I can imagine that that's true, that Google's going to make a lot of money on these books. And the pro argument there is, um, uh, well, yeah, they're making a lot of money on it, but on the other hand, they're exposing you to authors you might not have had, might, might not have ever seen before. This book used to be trapped in some library in some obscure place, and now it's online and anybody can get to it. So it may take some authors and make them way more famous, famous than they would have been otherwise. That's also undoubtedly true. That's a complicated issue, right? There's no clear-cut answers here of whether Google owning all the books, all the world's books, or at least scanning all the all the world's books and making them available is a good thing or a bad thing. It's, uh, there's a lot of complexity here, really a lot of complexity here. And was so like smack in this middle of this issue, which was never an issue at all before. Never an issue at all before. And now all of a sudden it's this huge issue with no solution. That's why I'm training you guys to go out there and figure this stuff out. All right, uh, Google could censor information. Google could not scan a book if it was anti-Google in some, re or some way or it was against their political beliefs or something like that, right? Google is the, is the owner of the information and they could censor it. And that's the, the con argument. The pro argument is, well, that's why we have laws. 
right? That's why we create laws, to uh, anti-censorship laws, to say it's not okay to censor stuff. So once again, the, the pro-argument is, well, this isn't about Google. This is about being able to read stuff online and what is allowed to be online and what's not allowed to be online. And furthermore, if you, don't like, if you think Google's got something that, you, that is Google is censoring something, well, you put it on your site and have people come there. Right? Those, are, those are the uh, pro-arguments. Okay, what about um, the books that Google doesn't scan? You know, they're not scanning everything, and for all intents and purposes, if Google doesn't scan it, it doesn't exist because everybody goes to Google, right? This is similar to the argument like, if Google doesn't index my page, it doesn't exist because no one's going to find my page except through Google. Same argument, right? And the pro-argument there is, uh, what about the books that the library doesn't stock? You know, we're, we're it's still better off than what we got now. So if, if I go to a library and it doesn't have this book, I'm out of luck, right? The same way as if I went to Google and it didn't have that book, I'm out of luck. So no different there. That's the, that's the pro-argument. Libraries should be public. This is a really interesting one. I love this one. Libraries should be public, and Google's creating a library, and it's a private library. It's owned by Google, right? And so the, that's the pro argument, the con, uh, the con argument. So I don't like this because libraries should be public. And the con argument is, uh, the pro argument is, why should libraries be public? You know, I mean, they always have. That's a fact. But tell me exactly why they should be public. And maybe a private library is okay. Maybe a private library is going to be much more effective. I don't see any governments going out and doing this, right? Google's spending billions to make this happen. Right. Yeah, maybe billions, maybe billions of dollars to make this happen. I don't see any governments going out and doing that. Meanwhile, libraries are getting defunded. So is it really true that libraries should be public? You know, I mean, I have my opinions about that, but I'm not going to say them. I just want to give you both sides of the argument. All right. This could make Google a monopoly. This could make Google the monopoly, and, and they now own access to all books. And do we want Google to be our main, you know, portal to all books? That sounds kind of scary. I don't know if I want that. You know, that's the that's the con argument. I don't trust Google to do that. And the pro argument was, got to trust somebody. You know, do we do you do you want all the world's books online or don't you? You know, and probably most people would say, oh, I guess I do want them online. That's really much safer. You know, we have copies of them everywhere. You know, we had this library one time in Alexandria. I don't know if you've ever heard about this. It was like the world's library burned down, all books gone, right? I don't want that to happen again. I don't want to lose copies of the books. So most people would probably agree, yeah, we want books online. We want them at least available online. If not, you know, if not, that's the main way we get to them. But you know it's going to be the main way you get to books online. You just know it. Um, whether, even, if, even whether or not you print them out, that they're online, most people would agree is at least inevitable, if not, you know, a good thing to do. And so the, the pro argument for, have, for Google Books is somebody's got to do it. Google's doing it. Google's putting the money in. They're investing in this. They're spending a whole lot of money to make it happen. So, you know, all right, let it be Google. Because it it it's not being anybody else, and Google's the one that's doing it. All right, so that's Google Books, and it's all about domination. Can you see? Can you see that it's a, a Google plan to dominate books, to be the one, to be under every book? So anytime you're dealing with books, you're dealing with Google, right? That's good for Google. That's totally good for Google. They're going to use it to, to, to forward their business model, specifically to figure out how to better target ads to you, right? Can you, can you just see that? You know, how you, you're reading through a Google book and the things you're reading about, it even knows like you, you, know, you dwelled on this page really long and so something mustn't be really important on that page and you know, just really much more information about you. That's Google Books. In a microcosm, it's really about the issues of domination, but it's also about things that are brand new that we haven't figured out that you know, we're just so far from figuring it out that it's not even funny and it's happening anyway. You know, it's in Google's interest to push this forward before we figure it out because that is going to be what's called a fait accompli. By the time we decide what to do about it, it's already going to be done. So it's like, well, Google's already, got, Google's already got all the world's books, you know, and I'm sure that conversation happened in Google. You know, there was like, well, debate back and forth, and then somebody said, you know what, we just got to do this, because if we wait and debate it, somebody's going to put up a regulation. We're not going to be able to do it. And meanwhile, we should just do it, start, start doing with it, and by the time they get all the regulations in place, we'll be done, and we'll already be in there. And at the very least, we'll be a big player. If not, you know, they'll just say, ah, forget it, it's already done, you know. See, you see how it works for Google? All right. Let me close with this last note uh, in the world domination arena. You know, countries have been trying to dominate the world forever, right? It's no, there's no, no, no news there, <laughs> right? A company that's trying to dominate the world is called an empire. The world's been full of them from the beginning of time, and I doubt we're ever going to get rid of empires. There's always people trying to take over everything and trying to dominate the world. That's kind of how it's happened. But now we seem to have companies that are at least as big, if not bigger, than countries. 
and more importantly than the size, right? You know, it says here Amazon is bigger than Kenya. Well, that doesn't sound too impressive. What happens when Google is bigger than the United States? Google's doing more money than the United States, right? At what point does it, do people start saying, well, Google's more important than the United States? I would not be surprised if that day comes within your lifetime that somebody says this company is way more important than the most important country in the world. Um, so what do we do about that? Here's the big issue that I want to raise is that countries, at least countries that are run not autocratically and, you know, arguably a lot of countries, maybe even nah, Kenya, Kenya's pretty democratic, but countries are run autocratically where somebody just decides and it's tough luck on the people. But usually those people overthrow the country. If that happens, eventually they do. Um, how about companies? Companies kind of get all the benefit, <coughs> but they don't have any responsibility. And this is what's core to this issue of, for example, should Google own all the books of the world? Should we trust Google to be the world's repository? Should we trust Wikipedia to be the world's encyclopedia? Who the heck is Wikipedia? You know, who, in, who would do that in the past? Should we trust Facebook to be the identity of all human beings, to, to like be the repository of our identity? Who's Facebook? You know, well, who do you got? Who are you going to put up against Facebook? A country, right? That's what, that's, that's who's there now. That's who we would normally have, have trusted to be our repository, right? Countries own libraries. They're public libraries. They're, they're owned by countries. Uh, countries owned identity, right? Countries owned, um, owned the significant information of the country. That's, it was, it was a property of the country, just like the natural resources of the country. Well, now these things are properties of corporations. What are we going to do about that? Is that okay? Is that not okay? Are they better than countries? Are they worse than countries? One thing that's very clear to me about countries, companies owning information versus countries owning information is that countries don't span the world and companies do. Facebook is the world's repository for information. We got this thing called the United Nations, which, you know, maybe someday the United Nations will be the, the guys that do that. Oh, here comes a train. Let me see if I can finish this before this train comes and blocks me out. So we used to say that countries did that. And then we invented this thing called the United Nations, which is actually kind of anemic for doing anything that really matters across countries. But here we have these companies. Nobody asked them to do it. They're making a ton of money to do it. And what are they doing? They're pioneering the new things that the new electronic world is about. Identity, information, access to information, um, uh, the world's repository of books. It's all happening in countries and companies. And so I ask you to try and figure out what should a company do to be responsible for having to, 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 be, to have the responsibility for the abilities that we've given them. All right, bye.